Venting. You need to consider the natural drafting for the unit as a certain amount of air needs to flow into and out of your stove unassisted or naturally. Therefore, you should plan to avoid any unnecessary turns or elbows within the vent system. They will add resistance to the system overall. The unit will need to be exhausted through a chimney connector, flue pipe, or stove pipe that is approved for wood burning products. You will need to maintain the clearances and safety rules determined by the venting manufacturer. On the outside of the home, you need to consider the termination of the flue system to ensure that the unit performs well. Wind direction, the outside construction of the chimney connector, the required minimum and maximum length of the venting are all factors in how your stove will operate. By maintaining required length and clearances to the roof, outside construction or trees, proper draft will be maintained within the vent system. When using existing masonry or factory built fireplaces, the chimney should be relined with 6 inch, 152 millimeter venting approved for wood burning appliances. This can either be hard pipe or stainless steel flex, depending on your installation. EcoChoice units are tested with chimney heights of 14 to 16 feet. Your system may require more than one tested length of venting. Review the owner's manual for more venting information. Draft. Before we explain details of how to operate and maintain your EcoChoice wood stove, it's important to understand the basics of wood burning. This process is often considered an art form and not a science. The most important factor in successful wood burning is the draft. Draft is created by the hot gases rising up the chimney creating a pressure difference between the air inside the home and the air outside the home. It continually moves fresh combustion air into the stove and hot exhaust gases out of the stove. Without this constant airflow, the fire will go out or burn with less than desirable expectations, such as smoky stove pipes or dirty door glass. Installing the venting termination near the roof peak on the windward side and the outside air intake also on the windward side of the house will get the best results. See the manual for other termination recommendations. Draft can be adversely affected by improper chimney height, a tightly constructed home that prevents enough fresh air from entering the stove, winds that pressurize the chimney, and the barometric pressure changes can all have a negative effect on draft. It's also important to remember that other appliances in your home may have a mechanical operation that competes with your unit for available air supply. This can lead to a negative pressure which can affect the operation of your unit and should be avoided. Also, letting exhaust gases or odors into the home is dangerous. These issues can be addressed by following the guidelines in the venting section in your owner's manual. Clearances. Installed and maintained properly, an EcoChoice wood stove will add beauty and warmth of a wood fire to your home. Carelessness and proper installation can put your home and your family in danger. Your safety is our number one concern so please pay special attention to the manual instructions for proper installation of your Heatilator EcoChoice stove or insert. And always have the operational smoke detectors and a fire extinguisher in your home. Codes and regulations have changed over time. So whether you're installing a new unit for the first time or replacing an older unit, it's best to consult your local municipal building department. This department will be able to provide you with valid information on what permit will be needed and the best way to secure that permit. Your local municipal department can also inform you of any burn restrictions or limitations that may have been enacted. Once these steps have been processed, check with your insurance carrier to avoid any lapse in your coverage for your home. Freestanding Installation you should always use appropriate safety gear, including gloves and eye protection. You will need to consider the slope and height of your roof. 
If it is either steep or high, you should use appropriate fall restraint to prevent serious injury that can occur if you were to fall from the roof. When planning where to place your unit in your home, there are a few considerations to remember. First, your stove and stove venting produce and contain extreme temperatures, so carefully evaluate where you place it in your home. For example, make sure your placement will not involve modifications to roof supports, rafters, joists, and that there are minimal effects to the draft for the stovepipe. The stove should be placed out of high traffic areas, children's play areas, or near combustible surfaces such as furniture or cabinetry. Minimum distances to combustibles are outlined in the owner's manual, so be sure that those clearances and protections are met and followed. The importance of this step can't be overstated. After measuring for clearances, it's time to install your required floor protection and protect it from radiant heat given off by the unit from sparks and falling embers. In the case of stoves, this is most often a pre-built hearth pad designed especially for wood stove units. The hearth pad for floor protection must be made of non-combustible material. Please refer to your owner's manual for proper clearances. Also, there needs to be an electrical outlet close to the unit to operate the optional convection blower if installed. The components of your exhaust system will include double wall pipe, the thimble, a thimble is manufactured or site-constructed device installed in combustible walls through which the chimney conductor passes to the chimney. Follow the installation instructions provided by the manufacturer for your venting manufacturer thimbles for masonry chimney and factory-built chimneys. A thimble trim collar, an appliance adapter, a slip section, an insulation shield, and a chimney connector. When connecting the Echo Choice units, use a standard 6 inch connector for the chimney connector, flue pipe, and stove pipe. Stove chimney pipe, a storm collar and flashing to protect the home from water seepage, and a termination cap. In heavy snow regions, we strongly recommend a snow guard to prevent damage to the stove pipe. It is recommended to run the flue pipe inside the home. When run outside the home, colder temperatures can affect the draft of the unit and reduce its performance. The warmth of the home keeps the internal flue pipe warmed for better exhaust flow. Once the stove is in place on the hearth pad, you will need to take final measurements to ensure proper clearances to the side and back of the stove to combustibles. Also, check the measurements from the front of the stove's glass to the front edge of the hearth pad. Then, take final measurements to ensure that the stove has proper clearances to other combustibles that are found in the room. Trial fitting the flue pipe to the unit before final assembly will help determine the proper height and placement of any vent openings you need to cut through the walls or ceiling. When cutting, the required clearance to combustibles must be followed using the venting manufacturer's instructions. Using a stud finder, locate the ceiling joists. Never cut through ceiling joists or roof rafters. With the ceiling joists located, cut several small pilot holes to aid in the cutting of an inspection hole. Using a small handsaw, cut an inspection hole and check to ensure that all electrical wiring is out of the way. Center the thimble over the inspection hole to aid in the drawing of the diameter of the hole to be cut in the ceiling. Next, cut the hole for the thimble in the ceiling. Insert the thimble into the hole. And, then using wood screws, secure it to the ceiling joists. Once the thimble is in place, install the thimble trim collar. Next, attach the appliance adapter to the double wall stovepipe that will be inserted into the trim collar. Make sure that you identify the flow indicator on the pipe. It's critical to ensure that all indicators face the way hot gases are being exhausted from the stove. With the appliance adapter in place, install the first section of pipe into the thimble. Now, attach the slip pipe into this first section. Now, insert the stove collar into the stove's top opening and attach a stove pipe to the collar, 
Slide the pipe down and use stainless steel screws to fasten the pipe sections together. Be careful not to penetrate the inner liner. Now from the attic, attach a chimney pipe to the thimble and install the attic insulation shield with collar over the chimney pipe. Using a plumb bob, locate the center of the chimney pipe and mark the roof where an initial pilot hole will be drilled. Drill the pilot hole through the roof. Then, up on the roof, using a storm shield as a guide, draw the diameter of the hole you will be cutting through the roof. Remember, never cut through roof rafters. Insert the saw into the pilot hole and slowly begin cutting the hole in the roof, enlarging the hole as you cut. Once the hole is cut to the diameter of your drawing, slide the storm shield's flashing under the roof shingles and nail it into place using roofing nails. Next, slide a piece of chimney pipe into the storm shield and connect it to the chimney pipe in the attic. Now, slide the storm collar around the chimney pipe and, using metal screws, tighten the storm collar around the chimney pipe. Then, silicone around the storm collar to keep water and weather elements from running down the pipe. Finally, install the termination cap. The venting must terminate at least 3 feet above the roof and at least 2 feet above any portion of the roof within 10 feet. Of course, the termination must be located away from trees or other structures to ensure proper performance. Do not mix venting components from various manufacturers. Differences in connecting designs can cause leaks in the venting, and the chimney may not be sealed for proper drafting requirements. You should always use appropriate safety gear, including gloves and eye protection. You will need to consider the slope and height of your roof. If it is either steep or high, you should use appropriate fall restraint to prevent serious injury that can occur if you were to fall from the roof. Insert installation. You should always use appropriate safety gear, including gloves and eye protection. You will need to consider the slope and height of your roof. If it is either steep or high, you should use appropriate fall restraint to prevent serious injury that can occur if you were to fall from the roof. To begin, you will need the following venting supplies. Stainless steel flexible an attachment ring, a weather guard shield, and a termination cap. Remember, the insert has a built-in convection blower, so you will need electricity for the blower to operate. Make sure there is an electrical outlet close by. The Heatilator Echo Choice wood insert is designed for factory-built or masonry fireplaces that have been installed in accordance with national, provincial, state, and local building codes. Prior to installing the Echo Choice insert, have the chimney and adjacent structure inspected and cleaned by a qualified expert. Most states require chimney sweeps and contractors to be licensed for this type of service. Replace any component parts of the chimney and fireplaces as specified by the professionals. All installations into factory built fireplaces must have the fireplace and venting inspected to ensure compliance with national and local codes. This will satisfy your insurance requirements. Depending on where you live, there will be differences between codes. For instance, there are differences between U.S. and Canadian requirements. So make sure all clearances for your location are met. After inspection, all repairs recommended should be made. Failure to comply with this step may result in house fires and or personal injury. Covering weak or broken fire brick or refractory or the removal of these components for installation are unacceptable. Damaged or modified fireplaces that no longer meet requirements may not be fitted with wood inserts. The outer pipe of any chimney should then be checked to ensure that the connections are tight and properly secured. This inspection will also help in determining the chimney connector best suited for your installation. Install the chimney liner, feeding enough pipe to connect the pipe to the insert inside the fireplace. Then, from inside the fireplace, slide the attachment ring onto the pipe and attach it with four stainless steel screws, securing it into place. Place the insert in the fireplace opening and remove the baffle protection channel 
the two baffle boards, and ceramic blanket from the insert. Now connect the pipe with attachment ring to the exhaust outlet of the top of the insert. Using the supplied retainer bar and bolts, reach into the stove and attach the retainer bar to the stove collar and then tighten the bolts down using the supplied nuts. This will draw the attachment ring down, drawing the pipe into the stove's exhaust outlet. Tighten the nuts until the pipe is secure. Then replace the blanket, ceramic boards, and baffle protection. Some installations may require an offset adapter to align the chimney pipe to the unit. Slide the insert into final position before checking clearances to ensure that the insert is centered in the fireplace opening. Next, refer to your owner's manual to determine the proper clearance from existing mantle to your new unit. Designed accessories may be added to conform to these clearances. Install the surround by sliding the surround around the unit. Consult your owner's manual for more information and then attach the door. Finally, install the termination cap. You should always use appropriate safety gear, including gloves and eye protection. You will need to consider the slope and height of your roof. If it is either steep or high, you should use appropriate fall restraint to prevent serious injury that can occur if you were to fall from the roof. Direct through roof mobile home. Mobile home installations require an outside air kit. They also require a UL 103 HT chimney connector and double wall pipe must be used. You will also need to use a slip section. The unit must be grounded with a number 8 solid copper grounding wire and terminated at each end with an approved NEC ground device and must be bolted through the hearth pad to the metal frame of the mobile home. Structural integrity of the walls and roof must be maintained when installing the venting. You must consult your owner's manual for proper clearances requirements when installing a stove in a manufactured home. Outside air kit. The four inch outside air connection is required for all mobile or manufactured housing. Otherwise, it's generally optional, but may be required depending on local codes. The unit will generally perform better when it is used with most new home construction. Install the outside air kit connections by following the guidelines set in the owner's manual. There are some clearance requirements, so be sure to be familiar with these requirements. Each bend or direction change in the pipe will act as a restriction and will slow the air flow somewhat. For a rear installation, remove the access cover on the back of the pedestal and discard it. Using a number two Phillips screwdriver, attach the flex adapter to the appliance using the four screws. Secure with a wire tie. For standard floor installation, Remove the circular knockout in the base of the pedestal. Cut a 4 inch or 102 millimeter hole in the outside wall or floor to accommodate the outside air piping. Use a 4 inch or 102 millimeter aluminum metal flex or rigid piping to directly connect outside air to the appliance intake. Never use dryer venting or vent caps. Use the supplied termination cap with a rodent screen to cap the outside air run. To prevent moisture penetration, seal between the wall or floor and the pipe with silicone. Outside air cannot be drawn from a closed crawl space hazardous or flammable storage areas, or be blocked by snow and leaves.